Hey guys, how's it going? Um, Kirish here from SEO Melbourne and I'm here with one of our clients, Gallon Plumbing. Ed from Gallon Plumbing, how are you going Ed? Good day, Girish. Well, thank you. Very well. That's good. Thanks for, having thanks, me. Uh, thanks for coming in today. Pleasure. So, um, Ed here is the CEO of uh, Gallon Plumbing and has also authored a book called The Attraction Trady. Um, so we just, you know, wanted to have a bit of a chat about, um, you know, I guess Ed, Ed's career trajectory so far and what led him to run Gallon Plumbing. So tell me, Ed, how's it going? What's been up in the recent past? Sure, mate. So um, uh, my, my backstory yep. is what led me to Gallon Plumbing. Is yep. I, I don't come necessarily from a strictly trade background. Trade I sort okay. of call myself a bit of a trade entrepreneur. Okay. I was lucky enough to study uh, a business degree at RMIT, just okay. around the corner from where we are here. Nice. And, um, but I also wanted to learn how to build houses. Yeah. Um, so I had a, always had a little bit of a burning desire to learn how to put yep. together a house. So yep. I actually studied a trade and studied carpentry. Yeah. Um, while I was doing that, yep. um, I was exposed to the trade, okay. of course. So yep. yeah, when you are exposed to the trade, for me, I saw lots of opportunity. Yeah. And um, uh, so over that period of time, saw that there was plenty of opportunity. And yep. unfortunately, I saw where there was plenty of plenty of mediocrity. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, post getting... Uh, uh, my qualification. Yeah. I've since run a couple of businesses. One in the building inspection business. Yes. So people engages prior to building a home. Uh, beg your pardon, buying a home to make yeah. sure everything's structurally sound. Yeah. And then I had a pest control business. Yeah. And during those times, which was about a five-year period ish, yeah. I um, I saw that there was a real gap in the marketplace. Yeah. For a quality service in the maintenance plumbing. Okay. So that led me and my business partner to buy a business in 2015. Okay. Um, which wasn't necessarily called Gallant Plumbing at the time, yep. but we entered the maintenance market yep. within plumbing within Melbourne. Within plumbing yeah. within yeah. Melbourne, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And just a, just a bit of a um, you know a backstory with the inspection and the pest control business. Yeah. Like, what led you to you know? Uh, Working in those two different trades industries, do you find that there is a massive difference between uh, a building inspections versus a pest control business? Are they sort of, uh, can you sort of relate them to each other? Yeah, um, look, they definitely relate. Yeah. There's, def there's certain connections. Yeah. Um, uh, we, were in a, we were in a certain niche in the yeah. pest control industry and okay. then in the building inspection we were in another niche another too. Niche. But yes, they did correlate one yeah. way, not necessarily the other, but one yeah. way. Um, so. Uh, Pre-purchase building inspections. Yeah, it's similar to getting um, getting when you buy a second-hand car. Yeah, getting checked over by a mechanic. We're like yep. a mechanic for a house. House. Yeah. Yep. So um, really important to make sure you're yep. making an informed decision prior yep. to making one of the most important the important purchases important of, your purchase life. of your life. So, um, but yeah, look, they did. They definitely were different, but there was yeah. there was some um, overlap. Sure. Yeah. And uh, just before that, you mentioned that you were pretty interested in learning how to build houses. So yeah. is that some is that like a passion? Are you looking to pursue to get your builder's license? What what's happening there? Yeah. So um, definitely a passion. Yeah. Um, probably more as I've transitioned through the the building. Yeah. I beg your pardon. The the, the business side. Yeah. I'm more passionate about building a business in the trade rather yeah. than building a house and yeah. uh, my wife and I are uh, working through where the next yeah. stage of where we're going to live will be so yeah. um, and we'd also like to do a you know, significant renovation to that property so yeah. yeah there will be it won't necessarily be a, a business venture but more on a personal, but more personal yeah. venture yeah. and are you looking to get your builder's license for just for that personal venture so that it could be an asset later on or is that something that you've thought of? Maybe. 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 Okay. Yeah, I That's definitely it. thought of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And is it sort of, uh, is it hard to get the builder's license? Like, is, is it a long process? Like, you, you know, you mentioned earlier that you've done a business degree, which would have taken up a couple of years of your time in yeah. business school. Like, how, yeah. how long does it take to get? So I've got all the qualifications for it. Okay. Yeah. So that makes it a bit easier. It is, yeah. But there's just a process you've got to go through. Okay. And the Victorian Building Authority rightly made yeah. it difficult to get. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't want houses falling down. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they do make it difficult, which is a positive thing for the industry. They're even cl um, clamping down further. Okay. So, look, it would probably be a 12-month 
12 to 12, 12, 12 to 24 month process. Okay. Yeah. It's not too bad, but mm. yeah. All right. So I guess, um, you know, now with your latest venture, just want to touch up on that gallon plumbing. So when did, when did you start gallon plumbing? How, how did, uh, you know, when you mentioned that when you bought the business, it wasn't necessarily called gallon. So how did, I guess, the brand gallon come about? Yeah. So the business was called, we purchased Cashmore Plumbing. So yeah. John Cashmore yeah. founded the business in the late seventies yeah. and the word cash in a trade business, mm. albeit it was his surname, just yeah. didn't, it didn't, um, it in my mind doesn't bode well for building that trust in yeah. clients. Um, so it's a very important part of a business cash flow, but I guess very important <laughs> part cash flow. But when a when a customer's when it, yeah. wanting to wanting to actually build that trust, yeah, um, we're not a cash business at yeah. all. So um, uh, we purchased the business in two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Um, shortly after that, we relocated and rebranded. Yeah. Uh, and to Gallant Plumbing, so yeah. moved to our Burwood location. Yeah. Um, you know. I suppose we were we knew there was going to be the business was going to evolve yeah and we really wanted to attract the right people and we yeah. wanted to attract the right clients yeah so the word gallon represents everything that we want to be as a trade business which is yeah. uh, being you know bold daring courageous yeah you know really pushing the boundaries of what a trade business or a plumbing business should look like yeah but then also um, being courteous, being trustworthy, being respectful, considerate yeah. uh, are things that, generally speaking, aren't words that yeah. describe the stereotypical tradie or plumber in Melbourne. So that's absolutely what we wanted to represent: is people that really care, yeah. really care about um, our client, yeah. and really care about you know building a relationship with them, yeah. really care about you know solving their problems, yeah. making it easy for them. So a very customer focused, I guess. Really customer focused. Yeah, really customer focused, and yeah. and just trying to essentially um, yeah, deliver a service that we all want yeah. and expect, and it just hasn't necessarily evolved into the trade yeah. space yet. But we really we know that there's a people want it. Yeah. It just hasn't happened. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So just touching up upon a couple of points earlier, you mentioned that, you know, you did see a massive gap in the trade industry uh, before you, you know, started working in uh, uh, the building inspection and the best inspection business. What what kind of a gap was this? Was it uh, more that there were loads of people becoming, uh, you know, trade professionals, but didn't know how to, I guess, present themselves? Or was it an issue with the service that they were providing? Yeah. You know, what exactly, where did you see that gap? So tradies are really good at being a tradie. Yeah. And they don't necessarily see value in building their skill set up to yeah. be actually, you're a businessman, you just happen to do the trade. Yeah. Right? So um, thank you, I was, I was, I wrote a book called The Attraction Tradie. It's yeah. written for tradies who are really good at being a tradie but don't necessarily know how to run a business. So. Um, I mean, there's just so many components to running any yeah. business, let alone a trade business. And, um, uh, you, know, um, you know, there are just things like how to market your business, yeah. how to present your business, how to, the financials around the business. Yeah. You know, you ask your typical tradie in Melbourne and you, or across Victoria or yeah. Australia, and you ask them, how did you go last year? Yeah. Did you make money last year? And surprisingly, how often, and we know this because we speak to a lot of people yeah. um, who are either looking to sell their business yeah. or are in business yeah how you know how did you go last year was it a yeah. profitable year and they will say I don't actually know okay <laughs> you know or uh, my wife does that okay. or she looks after the books or yeah oh you know the accountant is sort of worth looking after that this yeah. is nine months after the fact they so yeah. how can they make decisions of improvements if they don't actually know how they're going so there's a yeah. financial so, financial metric there's the marketing there's the branding there's the customer relationship side yeah. there's the you know there's so many different components that go there's the into service, business. Yeah, service, there's the service side service and how side, do you improve that how do you improve that yeah. you know really getting feedback from clients to understanding what does work well what doesn't work well it's yeah. it's really it's you know yes they are doing a trade yeah but that's really a very small, small part, part of a small part of the overall side yeah. of business and and because they haven't been taught it yeah you know when you go and do a trade at um you know a, a, a registered trade organization like yeah. tafe in victoria yeah is you know they learn to be a tradie they don't learn to be 
business, yep. but they'll do a very small portion of that skill will be around that. Yep. But Interesting. So do you think that um, sort of potentially a TAFE should introduce some business courses within their they do. degree? So they do. It's yep. just not... It's just not a core focus. Core that really should be one of the most important things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when when a plumber, for instance, yeah, I'll talk because I'm in the plumbing industry. When yeah. a plumber does his cert four, yeah, um, and he and wants to become a licensed plumber, so run his own business, yeah, a portion of that will be business. Yeah. So they'll do roofing and sanitary and so and, and drainage and the rest goes on, but they yeah. also do business. Yeah. Um, it's just very light on. Yeah. Yeah. It it doesn't touch up on a lot of the factors that actually help drive the growth of the business yeah. like you know a lot of the marketing aspects of it which you would have realized is pretty important very important comes to customer yeah. acquisition um all right so just to get an idea with um you know you mentioned that a, a lot of these tr- the trade programs once they do a cert for they are sort of privy to a lot of the business video how do you think that what, what what do you think that they should do in order to improve that uh, the level of qualification to become a plumber or to run your own plumbing business. Yeah, so... And do yeah. you think that business coaches sort of play an important role? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. look, I mean, a lot of tradies coming out, um, uh, coming out of their qualification Yeah, just know very little. Yeah. They just, um, and, and they admittedly say this, especially 10 years after the fact. Yeah. You know, there's lots of school of hard knocks along the way to get to that point. I mean, we yeah. all, we're all on the we journey, all we're all on the yeah. journey, but um, you know, those, some of those decisions that are made yeah. um, can really have impact on the you know, sustainability of the business. Yeah. You know, and a lot of trades that start a business that go, go in and then two years and they're like, that's nah, just too hard, it's yeah. just too hard. And they just don't know what they don't know. So yeah. they just purely don't know that they should be looking at the financials of the business, okay. understanding the cash flow. Um, working with professionals in the industry yeah. um, to gain more clients. Is yeah. that the client that I want to do business with? Yeah. Why? What are the you know? Am I making money on this client? Yeah. Is this client a challenging client? That's you the know? biggest question. All, 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 the, all these things are really important questions to understand. Yeah. Understand, but they don't even know to ask it. Yeah. You know, so they're just so you're right. Business coaches are a, a really big just to wet the whistle yeah wet the whistle and try and build that knowledge base yeah but it's a you know that's that in itself a five to ten year journey just to really get skilled up in business yeah yeah and surrounding yourself with good people that yeah. know business i think is really important but a lot of time they surround themselves with tradies other tradies who don't necessarily so know business. Know business. Yeah. so um massive opportunity and yeah. um definitely a gap in this knowledge yeah. skill set in business that they can constantly be evolving. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is a pretty important. I guess it's it's very important to surround yourself with the right people, as you mm-hmm. said earlier, in order to get different sort of exposures in a different like you know um, industries. So I'm going to touch up now upon you know um, the websites. You you've been I guess running uh, business for a while, and you know your earlier ventures. Um, do you? So even in your book, the the attraction treaty, you've mentioned that you know build a professional website is something that um, you know you've you've kept focus on. Why do you think that's important? Well, I mean we've all heard this before, but it's like yeah. when you go when you walk into a retail shop, yeah, you know the first few seconds people even walk in or walk past that shop, yeah, that the um, the visual merchandising has to be spot on. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to walk in. You yeah. know, and and even I was speaking to someone yesterday who who has a business on providing retail shops the perfect music. Yeah. So it's a real sensory experience. It's the smell when you walk into a beautiful shop. Yeah. It's the sound. It's the look. It's the way people greet you. Yeah. It's what they're wearing when they greet you. Yeah. It's everything. It's it's just like is this a somewhere I want to stay? Yeah. Interact and potentially purchase. Yeah. Websites just the same. Like so, when people go on to yeah. our website and when we look to build a website, we yeah. for us people want to start with we're going to build a trust. Yeah. So can the people will people trust this brand? Will people trust the company that? To even look beyond the first little portion. Yeah. Yeah. The first, it's the first impression that first impression. Most, yeah, that's yeah. right. So the first impression on the website I think is really important. Yeah. So we want to go, okay, is it clear? 
Can people get the information really quickly? Yeah. Can, um, do people like what they see? Have we built the trust enough yeah. that they actually want to look into it deeper? Yeah. Do people want to look deeper? Yeah. You know, um, uh, in plumbing, a lot of the time it's very much a, yeah, they've got a plumbing issue, they need a plumber. You know, they, yeah. no one, not many people um, scroll plumbing websites for, for a look. Uh, or for some DIY information, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah, sure, maybe, but that's a minority. Yeah, you know, that's a minority. It's it's very much people got need to go onto our walk into our shop, which is a website, yeah. and go. Do we like these? Do we trust them? Do yeah. we like them? Can we read up about them? Yeah. Have they got brand credibility? Yes, they do, or no, they don't. But hopefully, it's yes. Yeah. And then um, they then take action. What action that needs to be. Yeah. So really, uh, look, websites are huge. Websites yeah, it's massive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the previous ventures and Gallant, I, I know because we're working on Gallant's website, I just want to get an idea of, was digital marketing a big part of, you know, what, how you wanted to promote your biz- your businesses in the past? And yeah, the so it, it's definitely, I mean, we're big on diversification. Yes. So yeah. um, we, our business has grown pretty quickly over the last sort of five years. It's all yeah. relative, but um, we've gone from a team of, Three when I purchased the business to a okay. team of about forty-three. Oh wow, that's uh, so. That's and all, all we do is maintenance plumbing. So yeah. you know we might be doing anywhere from thirty-five to fifty jobs a day. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, for us, it's diversifying where that inquiry comes through. Yeah. So and we've got our client base. Yeah. We've got um, that's existing and ongoing. But yeah. Also, we need to keep building on that client base. Yeah. Um, and trying to bulletproof our business. Yeah. And the way we do that is through new client acquisitions. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, absolutely. It's a really important part of building yeah. that diversification so yeah. that, you know, we are we are getting new clients, whether they be, you know, um, domestic clients or commercial clients yeah. or, you know, our, our sort of niche is facility managers and body corporate managers. Yeah. That's what we really focus on. Yeah. Um, so are we... Are we targeting our messaging to those clients? To those clients. Yeah. Okay. yeah, interesting. And um, you know, we we worked on a digital strategy, I guess, with you guys for the last for a good period, over a period of eight months to a year now, close to a year. And a lot of our digital strategy was, uh, you know, diversifying content on your website and trying to diversify. Has this, I guess, helped um, you know your business and your website? Um, I guess give more diverse information to, uh, or target a diverse range of audience? Do you feel that it's helped? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, it's helped. You know, it's, yeah. it is, um, it's ever evolving. Yeah. You know, Google's it's, something that uh, I know a little bit about, but in terms yeah. of, in terms of um, being a, a, a subject expert, <laughs> yeah. I'm miles away from that. But, yeah. you know, if, if, um, you sort of the whole sort of saying you are who Google says you are. Yeah. And um, uh, if we're able to, if we're able to be and uh, be an expert in a certain niche of plumbing, yeah. And people search for that plumbing, plumbing that, yeah. that plumbing, and we're there, and that then opens the door for them to explore our business. Yeah. Of course. Okay. It it it, yeah. it it um, very beneficial. Um. So, uh, I mean, I hope I've answered your question, but but it is something that we. That we do see an importance of being subject, subject matter, matter experts. Expert yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. And earlier, you, uh, you know, there was a point where you mentioned that the first impression of the website's everything. Um, you know, the ability of users being able to find a specific service that they've got an issue with. You know, navigating through your website. Uh, I guess providing the user with the best experience possible when they land on your website, like like a retail store. Um, so you basically got it completely right from that angle because the way Google's algorithm is sort of um, you know tuned to uh, right now is it's rewarding websites that take that extra effort in sure. providing the users with a better experience sure. because at the end of the day it's it's in Google's best interest to provide users with the best possible website for the search you sure. know query that they've just typed in. Sure. So a lot of times um, you know. Um, a lot of companies try to get hum, hung up on technicality. And I've seen this uh, happen a lot with a lot of our clients. They're like, no, but we want this to happen. And then I, I tell them, you know, it's, it's maybe it's time you take a step back instead of trying to get a bit too hung up on technicality. Um, try and put yourself in the user's shoes. You know, when a user lands on the website, you just need to try and provide them with the best possible experience. It's like trying to stay interesting on a date, right? <laughs> 
um, it's it's very important to make sure that you've got that person's attention in that in that first say 15 seconds that they land on your website so a lot of our strategies are now more focused towards providing users with a better experience and sort of making their website uh, better in terms of content and UX rather than you know trying to do a lot of the black hat SEO sure. techniques which sure. I'm sure you've also been burnt in the past yeah, with, you bet. with yeah. SEO providers yeah. right yeah yeah you bet yeah, yeah. so so yeah, um, you know, getting back to my point, you, you mentioned that you have tried a bunch of SEO providers in the past and have gotten burned. Why do you think that is? As in, was it due to lack of communication? What, what, what I guess, failed in the process or what exactly didn't work out with the providers? So, like every market, I think, yeah. it's, a, I think it's a pretty competitive space. Yes, it is. It is very competitive And space. how to differentiate yourself yeah. is... Um, I'd imagine people look to provide guarantees. Yeah. And part of that guarantees is um, they've got to get results. Yeah. And part of those results are, well, how do they get results? Where well, they need to maybe cut some corners yeah. in order to get those results for it to be a viable option, yeah. really. So I'd imagine that's how Black Hat SEO, SEO yeah. um, comes about. Again, I'm no, I'm no expert, yeah. but um, you know, if they've got clients that want to get results, yeah. they can't get the results without doing yeah. black hat. Yeah. That tends to play out. So my experience has been, um, uh, I've had a couple of providers that have yeah. said they'll promise something yeah. and they don't deliver. Yeah. Um, and then they go a little bit rogue. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's just complete damage done to the website. And then yeah. you literally, some in, in some instance, have to start again, yeah. which is a bit of a disaster. And just to get an idea, you know, just, just, I guess, talking about guarantees that are being provided, um, you know, we as an SEO to the business, yeah, we do tend to work on keywords, but sometimes, you know, when clients come to us and tell us, you know, we, we absolutely want to rank for this particular term, um, we understand the importance of it, but we also try to tell, you know, educate certain clients that sometimes it can be a bit hard, especially with, you know, because every website has a different journey. and. A website that's been around for a lot longer has the potential of ranking better quicker. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when someone comes to you with a brand new website, you need to set that expectations. Sure. Right. You know, right from the get go. Um, I feel that a lot of uh, the SEO providers tend to forget that aspect of the expectation. Sure. Uh, with our clients, and I've, I've realized that if you do, you know, leave that aspect of expectation out. You are going to, at you know, six, three or six months down the line, there's going to be a bit of a uh, problem because it's going to be a case of he said, he said, yeah. she said. So we, yeah, yeah. So I guess what we try to do is we instead of trying to try and guarantee, give the client guarantees that we're going to rank you number one or whatever, we talk about the inquiry rates. Are, are you guys getting more inquiries from when you started working with us? And I guess that's, uh, you know, become that's helped us, um, you know, talk. I guess achieve better results because at the end of the day it's the inquiry and the quality of inquiry that matters yeah you know like if you've Could got no well. inquiries um, for certain other keywords and you weren't able to rank for a specific term but you were getting good inquiries I guess the inquiries mattered more than the that's actual right. ranking yeah. because that's exactly it, it what doesn't it doesn't matter about the ranking it's yeah. about is the inquiry there yeah. does the phone ring yeah. are the are the emails coming through yeah can we turn those inquiries into sales into sales yeah. exactly Simple as that, you know, and um, I don't need to be number one yeah. in plumbing for Melbourne. Yeah. I just, I want, uh, and and uh, I don't really want to be. It's yeah. more about, like, can we can we improve our inquiry rate? Yeah. rate? Can we, every, so we've got mm. the, someone who goes on a website, are they actually taking action from yeah. there and picking up the phone? Yeah. Generally, people will pick up the phone. If they've got a plumbing issue, they'll pick up the phone. Are they picking up the phone? Are we having a really good, um, yeah. uh, conversation with them and building trust. Exactly. Does that inquiry turn into a phone call? Uh, turn into a job? Job. Yeah. Into a job or a quote. Cool. Either or is fine. Yeah. So and then are we then converting that and do, or giving that customer a really good experience? Yeah. While we're here, so it's just SEO's got a part to play. Part to play. Part yeah. to play. And then our website's got a really important part, part to part play. play. Then our people picking up the phone got a really important part to play and our plumbers have got a really important part to play and then a follow up after that a client has had yeah. an experience of it. so it's just a cycle yeah. and um, SEO has got a, yeah. you know a, 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 at the front end um, an yeah. important part but it's not everything yeah yeah 
for sure. For mm. sure. All right, and just you know, uh, I guess to finish finish off the, I've taken a, uh, a lot of your time this morning, and just to finish off, you know, this uh, podcast, just to get an idea, of what what does the future hold for Gallant? Like, are you guys looking to diversify, or you know, maybe acquire businesses with similar interests in the plumbing space, or are you guys looking to you know, say, do a vertical acquisition where you tr- you know you, you're going to be acquiring a company that. Um, Potentially has a lot of uh, assets that relate to the plumbing space. What, sure. what is the plan? Sure. Moving forward. Yeah. So we um, the last just shy of five years we've acquired seven businesses. Okay. So part of our growth strategy yeah. has also been through acquisition. So we yeah. purchased um, long-standing existing maintenance plumbing businesses yeah. based in Melbourne. Yeah. You know, one of our businesses called Warboys Plumbing has been around for yeah. nearly a hundred years. So think of the client base that's got yeah. like 100 years of trading. You know, it's yeah. humongous. And um, a couple of other businesses that we've purchased have been around for close to 50 years. Yeah. So um, uh, what we have done is we've grown quite considerably yeah. over this short period of time. Yeah. The next sort of two to three years is just around consolidation. So yeah. um, you know, we we'll sort of talk internally about bulletproofing our business. Yeah. So really making sure that the people that we've got in the business are wonderful. Our service is great, yeah. really great. Um, you know, are, are we? You know, the clients that we're working with, like, want to? We want to really consolidate those relationships, yeah, like, just to the next level. Yeah. Um, um, just so that we're a really important part of their business, yeah, or their their working lives, yeah. Um, so that's the next two year period. Okay. Um, we haven't got anything overly that glamorous outside of that. Outside, okay. But but for the next two years, yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, for us, it's all about the people. So yeah. we're really focusing on the people component, yeah. and then um, who knows beyond that. But at this stage, for the next two years, it's yeah. just really just making sure the service is great, the customers are receiving a great service, and um, you know, and you guys are growing, of course. And, uh, and look, we're, we're even like growing. So we're growing. We'll grow. We'll continue yeah. to grow because that's just. Hopefully, if we're doing a good job. Good job, yeah. Word of, organic word, word of mouth yeah. and away we go. But, you know, growing personally. Yeah. You know, it's not sn- stuff that is done. Look, yeah. It's, it's not communicated very well in plumbing. We want to personally grow. Yeah. You know, our communication styles. Yeah. Um, uh, how we deliver the service. Uh, our leadership. Yeah. You know, we've got a leadership program that we're running through the business. Okay. Interesting. So, um, you know, we all absolutely want to personally grow as well. So, um that's a point of differentiation itself, yeah. I, I believe. Um, so, yes, there's growth, but there's consolidation. Yeah. That's a real focus. Interesting. And just to get an idea, when you mentioned the leadership program, um, are there a lot of, say, for instance, plumbers and tradies who you know work, have worked in that space who aspire to pick up like a management position in your company? Is that you know is the management program there to help that process, or you know what exactly? Um, who who who's would be the best candidate for that management program? So um, for us, it's around. So this whole consolidation piece yeah. is also we're doing a little bit of restructuring. Yeah. So um, part of that restructuring is um, setting up smaller teams within yeah. a team. So our business has grown from three to forty three, and yeah. people can sometimes feel a bit. Oh, I'm part of this big organisation. It's not that big, but they've come from a small business, the average size business, plumbing business in Melbourne, sort of two to three people. Yeah. So, so it's a very much a cottage industry. Yeah. So they've gone from two to three to 43, feel a bit lost in the crowd. Yeah. Um, but where for us it's around um, uh, basically building the smaller teams where they do feel really important part of those teams. Yeah. And you always hear when you speak to a tradie, yeah. they will always say, yeah, I'm looking to get off the tools at some point in my career. Yeah. Right. What is that pathway? What does it look like? Yeah. How, what skills are they? Do they need to? Are they going? Are they? Do they need to develop? Are they going to develop? Yeah. Um, in order to bring value to a, a business where they can say yes, I am worthy of this role. Yeah. Or I've got experience in this role. I've done education in this role. Yeah. So, um, part of our restructuring is around giving people opportunities to grow and develop yeah. and work through the ranks yeah. so they can get off the tools. So they can go from a plumber to an emerging leader, from an emerging leader to a, a team leader, yeah. a supervisor. Um, and they do get skills through leadership. They yeah. do get skills and, and training. They do get skills estimating yeah. and supervising and running jobs yeah. and 
budding programs and mentoring and you know, all yeah. those types of things that just aren't done. Yeah. You know? And they're not done because life gets in the way and work gets in the way and they're busy. But for yeah. us, it's definitely around, let's focus on this yeah. and um, give people pathways. I think it's really important. People want to grow. Yeah. They generally do want to grow through their career. Yeah. So they want a pathway, so we're providing that pathway. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. And that was Edward from Gallon Plumbing. Cheers. Thanks for thanks for coming in today. Cheers, Gary. Cheers. Pleasure. Yeah.